let's focus more on the actual uh, lava flows themselves. First, we're gonna talk about basaltic lava flows. Remember that basaltic lava flows are very hot. They have low silica, they're mafic, which means they have a low viscosity, things catch up, very runny. Um, so they can flow for very long distances. Remember I said that the volcano in Hawaii is one of the most, or actually is the most expensive volcano in the world. And that's because when it does erupt, the basalt lava flows uh, flows for great distances. And here in this image, you can see that lava flow just totally consume a road um, and communities, a lot of those little white specks you're seeing are actually the roofs of houses. Um, and because basaltic lava is very runny, it tends to create what we call a shield volcano. And often when we close our eyes and we picture a volcano, we think, you know, the little tall triangular shape. But most of the volcanoes in the world, you might not even recognize a, as a volcano when you looked at them because they're more of a very broad dome. It's that shield shape. Um, and those shield volcanoes, because they're so big, they don't often have just one singular crater where the magma comes out of. Instead, the magma tends to come out of fissures or rifts, cracks along the sides of the volcano. Um, again, which allows huge amounts of lava to spew out and flow for great distances. Um, now shield volcanoes, because they're so big, they typically have a caldera in their center. Um, and calderas are just these huge, uh, basically dropped down areas that are formed after the volcano erupts. There's now empty space inside the volcano when you get that, that depletion, that basically that exhale of the volcano. Um, so as that caldera is replenished with magma, it grows back up and then erupts and goes back down. So when we try to predict volcanoes, one of the things we do is look at the elevation of the caldera, right? Is it increasing? Does it look like it's about to explode? Or is it calm and deflated? Now, we call the eruptions from shield volcanoes that create these huge expanses of solidified basalt, flood basalts. Um, and these flood basalts can take up immense areas. Here is a world map of flood basalts, and you can see that, right, they can cover large chunks of continents. Okay. Um, so here's an example of a, a fairly modern flood basalt. Um, this picture is from the Columbia River Gorge in Washington and Oregon, and back in the Miocene, there were basaltic volcanoes that erupted over and over and over again, and these basalts flowed through several states, right? Going back to this picture, the Columbia River basalts over here in the Northwest, uh, the Pacific Northwest of the US, you can see covered uh, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, I think some parts of Montana, right? These huge amounts of land. And you can see in this picture, every single layer is a different flood basalt, creating these this huge amount of basalt eventually that built up over time. Um, compare the, the little bus and the little picnic shelter down there for scale. Okay, so um, the Columbia River Gorge, the flood basalts cover uh, 120,000 square kilometers and have a thickness of one and a half kilometers. Um, I've hiked it, let me tell you. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff there. Uh, very high, very deep. All right, the next one, um, now I'm just going to talk about different types of basalts, which are, are so cool. So the next one is columnar basalts. Um, and this happens when a basalt lava, flood of basalt lava, all cools at the exact same rate. And as the magma cools, it all condenses into a smaller volume. And if this happens at the same rate all over the entire magma body, you get these um, hexagonal cracks, kind of like you would see when mud is drying and you get those hexagonal mud cracks, the same thing happens in the columnar basalts. Um, and you can see, again, these people for scale, these columnar basalts can be quite large. Um, pillow basalts are also super cool. So pillow basalts form on the ocean floor and it, they occur when magma is erupted onto the ocean floor. The outer portion of the blob of magma is going to solidify first because it's in contact with that cold water, whereas the inside of the magma is still hot, is it's going to burst through that crust and form another blob. And this is going to happen over and over and over and over again until eventually 
you have this mass of pillow basalts. And if you want to see an actual video of this pillow basalts forming underwater and hear the explosions, go to this YouTube video. It's super cool. A picture of what pillow basalts look like after they're solidified, after they're formed, they kind of just look like uh, pillows of basalt, right? Again, they form on the ocean floor, but they can be uplifted onto the surface, onto land. So these are some pillow basalts that you can actually see on the surface.